Ms. Boyd, you are here today with your son, a semi-pro football player who you say is being taken advantage of by the defendant. You argue she's told your son and another man that they are her three-year-old daughter's biological father. Ms. Walker, you admit that another man was at the hospital when your daughter was born. You admit he cut the umbilical cord. You even admit he's on the child's birth certificate. But now you say you suddenly changed your mind and believe Mr. Boyd is her biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Boyd, why do you believe Ms. Walker is now claiming your son fathered her daughter? Your Honor, I raised my child to be a good man and a father. And I just believe that Ms. Walker knows his potential, him being a semi-pro football player and all, and that he'll do the right thing for not only the child that I believe is his, but also for the other two children that she have. And I just don't want, if this is my grandbaby, I just don't want her to go through what I went through. I believe the man was my dad for seven years. And when he passed away, I found out he wasn't my father. And I don't want that for not only this baby, no baby. I understand. <laughs> Ms. Walker, your response to that? I did come trying to keep it 100 with both men and letting them know that it's a possibility either or could be the father of this child. And in my heart, I felt like it was the other guy because he was there and he stayed around. Mr. Boyd, he disappeared when MIA on me and he wasn't around three months later. Now, all of a sudden, you want to keep sending me pictures and that's what gave me doubt about the whole situation because they did look alike and I have um, proof and um, evidence right here, Your Honor. Jerome, can you please hand me that evidence? And that's the reason why I had doubt because she did look like Mr. Boyd. But he went MIA, like I said, and um, the other man stepped up and he was there from the, from the so beginning. So this evidence here on the left is a picture of Mr. Boyd as a child. And then on the right is a picture of your daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Regine. Yes, Your Honor. Her eyes, they both have like the little bug eyes and um, their teeth. When she smiles, they touch just like his does. Can I say something, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. It's ma been three years and we've been trying to do this test. I shouldn't have had to bring them here after three years. And so when you found out you were pregnant, you told Mr. Boyd and the other guy? Yes, Your Honor. You told them both? I told them both at the same time. Mr. Boyd, what did she tell you? Uh, she told me that it was a possibility it could be mine or the other guys. So she was honest? Yes, she did. What was your response? Uh, I told her that we need to get a DNA test done because I was not present. I did not sign the birth certificate and I was not because there doing the birth. Because you chose not to be there. Wow. Is there a reason why you didn't go up to see the baby, Mr. Boyd? No, there wasn't. I, I don't believe I was there that day, that weekend that it happened. I wasn't there when she was born. I got the call, I was out of town. The man of my other two kids, he was there from day one and he came to the hospital. And he was there when I had her and he came and he stayed for a little bit and then he continued to go on about his Excuse business me. because Honor, he chose to beat her. I have proof right here that he signed the birth certificate. And he did? Yes, he did. Um, Jerome, let me see that evidence, please. This is birth certificate for Ray Jeanne. And yes, I do see signature here under father. Yes, he was there and he signed the paper and he, she got his last name and everything because he was present. When he went MIA, I'm not trying to keep nobody around who doesn't want to be kept because I feel if you wanted to know, you would have been there from day one, regardless the situation. So, during this time, during this three years, have you built a relationship with Regine? Yes, Your Honor. You have? I have. Describe it, please. Uh, when she was about maybe two or three months old, they came to our family reunion and we showed her our whole family. And it was probably over 300 people there. So I saw the resemblance. She looked like me when I was a little girl. But I didn't know 
anything about this. All I know is my, my son told me that this is his baby. I never even questioned it. I didn't know anything about another guy. I didn't know any of that. So you've developed a real bond with Regine. Yes, Your Honor, I love her. And Mr. Boyd, how about you? What is your relationship like with Regine? Uh, we have a good relationship together. We, I, I, she calls me every now and then to ask, just to talk to me out during the day, see how I was doing, say hi, and then she'll go on about, she'll get bored, and then she won't talk on the phone no more. But <laughs> she just about calls me just about every day. If she not, calls your daddy? Yes. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Miss Walker, what's Regine's relationship like with the other man? With the other man, she does call him dad, but it's like he has that on and off relationship with her, and that's what I don't like. So your three-year-old daughter is calling two different men daddy? Yes, ma'am. <sighs> Can I say something, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. As a grandmother, when she spent Christmas with us, it broke my heart because she said something about the other man and that being her dad, and then she said something about my son. Like I said, being through what I went through, I couldn't correct her. How do you correct a three-year-old? When they're already confused, it just really broke my heart, and that's but why just... we're here today. Okay. I think it's time we get this resolved. I'm ready for the results. No? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Boyd v. Walker, pertaining to whether three-year-old Rajene Hayes and as to whether Mr. Boyd is her biological father, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Boyd, you are not her father. I'm sorry. It's okay. I apologize for my actions, but I did let you know that from the beginning. Mr. Boyd, Ms. Boyd, I'm just happy that it came out now. Opposed to her living for 18 years, thinking that she had two fathers and not knowing the difference, because... How do you feel, Mr. Boyd? I know you said you developed a love and relationship. It, it hurts a lot, because I do love her, like she's my own. She still is, but she's not mine. So I'm glad you came today, and I'm glad you got the truth, and I hope you all feel that you're better having found it out. But now there's still a beautiful little girl that's established a relationship and a connection to you that you all have to figure out how to then either incorporate or somehow slowly move away. So her feelings and her spirit and her sense of self are protected, okay? And as a unit, figure out how to make this okay for Regine, okay? I yeah. wish you the very best of luck. Thank Court you. is adjourned. Okay. Thank you. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Smith versus McBride. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. Smith, you're here today because you claim that growing up, you were told again and again that different men were your dad. Aww. Yes, Your Honor. Today, you say you hope to put an end to a lifelong mystery when you meet a man for the very first time that you finally believe is your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Smith, first, take me back to when this mystery began. When I was 15, I was told by a cousin that the guy had, that had been raising me was not my biological father. Did you confirm that with your mother? I did. She told me, they, they both ended up talking to me and they told me the truth about it and that there was a different man that was biologically my father. And um, when I got a little bit older, I tried to contact that guy 
and he just didn't want anything to do with me. Did you ever get a hold of him? I actually went to his job and um, he said that there was a test done and um, that it came back negative. And when I asked him about the results of the test, I asked him if I can see the test results. He got real like defensive about it and he, he wouldn't have anything else to do with it. He said that he would contact his attorney if I brought it up anymore. Really? So you waited and waited for this moment. You say you've been through so much in your life. Yeah. It, it hurt me really bad knowing this guy that, you know, had been there my whole life, um, finding out the truth that he wasn't, in fact, you know, my biological father. And Did anyone ever tell you why? No. I asked him who hung around back then, you know, in their group or whatever, you know, and uh, he had mentioned one man that could, in fact, be my father. Um, so he told me that his name was uh, Mr. McBride. Okay. And um, I contacted him on Facebook. And that was sent to the man that's in court today? Yes. So you have made contact with him? I have. But you've never met him? I haven't. You're going to meet him for the first time. He is here right now with his wife. Jerome, will you please escort Mr. and Ms. McBride in? Go up to the left side there. Hello, Mr. and Ms. McBride. Thank you so much for being here. We're here talking with Ms. Smith about her journey, her long journey. Before she ever sent you that Facebook message, did you have any idea she existed? No idea whatsoever, Your Honor. <laughs> he was, he's real close with his children. And um, when she got a hold of him and the possibility that she was his daughter came up, he was upset because he said, well, I've, I may have missed out on 35 years of her life. Aww. Mr. McBride, you do remember the relationship with Miss Smith's mother, am I correct? Yes, I do. I've talked to mutual friends and everything else, and I was never told. I had no idea whatsoever. So you've seen her mother talk to mutual friends you've had. Yes. And no one has ever mentioned Miss Smith? That it was a possibility at all, no. Do you believe she's your daughter? I believe there's a great possibility of it. You do? Yeah. <laughs> and why is it you believe that? Well, from pictures that we've looked at, and uh, like my wife will say sometimes, that she acts a lot like I act like. Uh -huh. and, uh, Your Honor, they're so much alike, it's uncanny. Really? Yes. In which way? Describe, please. Well, they not only look alike, and I have pictures here. I'd like to see those. Jerome, would you hand me the pictures, please? But their personalities are so strong, too. There's just an amazing resemblance. There is and just... these are the photos you submitted to the court. Yes, ma'am. This photo is? <laughs> the Ms. one Smith on the left the child. is Angie, and the one on the right is um, Mr. Mr. McBride's Mc... mother. Mother, yes. As a child. They even have that little twist in their mouth that mm. she's got that that his father has. Mr. McBride, you said you have Boy. Yes, I have two boys. Do you have any girl children? No, I don't. I would have loved to have had a little girl. And... We, we, we just, we bought her a dress because Dave said that he had oh. never gotten to buy her one. So if she's his, we oh, bought her baby beautiful. girl a dress. <laughs> so, Miss Smith, as beautiful as this is, there's still some doubt here as well. There is doubt. I just, um, I don't want to get hurt again after all of this that I've been through trying to find, you know, who this person is. I just, I just don't want to get hurt. Jerome, I think it's time we go to the room.
These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Smith versus McBride, when it comes to 34-year-old Angela Smith, Mr. McBride, you are not her father. Oh. I'm sorry. Me too. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know this was not the result any of you wanted. Well, I hope she finds cooperation from others and maybe maybe there's someone else we don't know about but i hope i hope she gets the answer she needs and, and we do too miss smith we will be there to help her and we plan to make a trip to see her uh, before winter comes in and we're still going to do that good that's beautiful i wish you all the very best of luck take care Mr. Hodges, you and your mom opened your case today because you both say the defendant is a liar and a cheater. You don't believe you fathered her one-month-old daughter, Lillian Willard, and plan to prove that today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Willard, you too are here with your mother, and the two of you testify that you are 1,000% sure Mr. Hodges fathered your daughter. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Hodges, explain to me why you think Ms. Willard is a liar and a cheater. She uh, cheated on me, and I caught her with multiple guys. She had one hidden in the room, and whenever we first got together, she said that she would never hurt me or cheat on me. She would be truthful, and yet she's lied to me left and right. Miss Willard, you kept lying and you kept cheating? Um, no, I did not. I had a guy over at my house, yes. He was visiting because he was a childhood friend, and I didn't tell him because I knew he'd flip out because I know how he is. I want to understand the nature of this relationship. Where did you meet? I met him through a family member of his. She had one night stand with him, and I was there to comfort her, and we talked for a week or so, and... Oh, you met her after she had a one-night stand with another guy, and then she cried on your shoulder. And then you and she got together. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Blevins... Yes, ma'am. I understand that you are the one who pushed your son to open this case. Yes, Your Honor. And why did you do that? Um, because I knew that she had been cheating on him. He had caught her with another guy that she said was a friend, but yet he was hidden in her house when he, when my son got there. You found him hiding in the house? Yes, Your Honor. Hiding in the house where? In her mother's bedroom. But, 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 Your Honor, but Did Your Honor. you help hide the other guy in your bedroom when I Mr. Hodges came? They had broke up. So why do you have to hide anybody? Because she right. didn't want him to know. She didn't want to hurt him. She didn't want to start no trouble because Hardy's got a temper. Well, we was engaged. It was my understanding they had broke up. So were you engaged or were you broken up? We was engaged. Yeah, we, we were engaged. Mm. So you were engaged, Miss Willard? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So now that makes more sense when your fiance came in the house than you hid this other guy in the... Because I didn't want to fight to start. And Your Honor, she was what? already married when they got engaged that my son didn't know about. So you were engaged to Mr. Hodges, but you were married to another guy at the time? Yes, Your Honor. I feel like he has been deceived and took advantage of. What was your first impression when you met Ms. Willett? What did you think? I thought she was sneaky. She always kept her phone on her. She um, never let him get a hold of it. And when she was on it and he would come around, she would hide it. I've had messages from a guy that she was seeing while she was seeing my son. How did you find him? It's the, the guy that was with her when Lillian was born at the hospital. Do you have those I, messages? Yes, ma'am. Let me have those. Jerome, can you please bring me those messages? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Blevin says, I do understand my son was engaged to her and caught her cheating. The other man says, we got together on June 2nd of last year. Ms. Blevins, you say, let me check the dates. Give me a minute. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Blevins, you say, together, August split up a few times 
in between and broke up for good October 6, 2017. The other man said, so she cheated on both of us. Mm. And you write back, looks that way. Yes, ma'am. So, Ms. Willard, were you dating this man and Mr. Hodges at the same time? No, Your Honor. Your Honor. So why is this man saying this? He's given all these specific details to Ms. Blevins. He was at the hospital when Lillian was born. Yes, I was with him at that time. Oh. Your Honor, he's, Your Honor, he's saying that. He's saying that because he wants my daughter. I've been through it with this person. When, I think it's in February, right after Christmas sometime, when she, she didn't even know she was pregnant at that time. She left my house with him and she texted me about... She was about five months, six months pregnant, something like that, maybe. And she told me she was pregnant. You're speaking about when your daughter was pregnant with Lillian. Yes, that's when she was. Is Lillian your only child? No, Your Honor. She hid that from us, too, at first. Back it up. Back it up. (laughs) So she hid that she had a husband before she met you, and you were engaged to her when she really already had a husband. She hid that she had had a child. And she also hid a man in her mother's house when you came over. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Hodges, take me to the day you found out Miss Willard was pregnant. She called me and she said that she was eight months pregnant. And... Eight months? Yes. Later on down the road, I'm sitting there texting her every day, asking about the baby, seeing if the doctor's appointments are going well and everything. Come find out whenever we called her OBG to see when her next appointment was. Uh, They said it was her uh, checkup for the baby. Checkup? Yes, ma'am. For the baby in her stomach or the baby? Out. Postpartum, Your Honor. Postpartum. You have evidence that reflects that? that Let me see that, please. (laughs) May 27th, Ms. Hodges writes to Ms. Willard, how's the baby doing? Ms. Willard says she's okay. Her lungs aren't fully developed right now. And then you write, and when is she due? And you write back, Ms. Willard, I don't know. Doc is showing me a different due date. And she won't be here till July. So if that's the case, you ain't got nothing more to worry about. That was on May 27th at 8.25 a.m. And Lillian was born on what day? May the 23rd. (laughs) Ms. Willard? This is too much lying. I know. (laughs) This is is just too much lying. Now, I heard about five lies already. What is going on? Why are you texting him like the baby isn't born when the baby is born? Okay, he's married now, and I just didn't want to break up a marriage when he found out he had a kid by another person. Um, that's, that's it. She... But you told him, I'm pregnant eight months. I didn't find out till I was six months. You told him anyway. So what is this about breaking up a marriage? You'd already told him you were pregnant. Because I was with the other guy, and I had been living with him for a while, and... I thought I was going to keep living with him, but we broke up. And And this is the other man that was at the hospital when Lillian was born. Yes, Your Honor. Did you ever tell this other man that he was Lillian's biological father? No, I did not. So why not allow the man who supposedly is her biological father to be present for the birth or at least know she's in the world? That was my fault, Honor. Well, listen, and, and, and I'm not, I'm not just uh, being hard on you. I'm trying to uncover what's going on because it is your fault. But I want to know why. Why are you lying? What was the lie about? Was it because you didn't want... You wanted to be with the other guy, so you didn't want Mr. Hodges up there? No, that's not why. So your Honor, what she was wanted, it? She wanted to do a DNA test on the other guy first. Just to make sure. So, wait a... Hold on now. Now, that's another lie you just told right here. I just asked you, did you tell the other guy, could he possibly be the biological father? And you said no. I never told him that. He wanted a DNA test, so I was going to give him one. And then we found out he was the dad, and he was like, well, don't worry about it, because now I know. 
how'd you find out he was the dad? Because We're here I, in this courtroom to find because out. The because the way that she looks, looks just like him. Have you seen her? She looks oh, just like Oh, so you're saying like once him. the baby was born, you felt like yeah. this is Mr. Hodge's baby. We don't even have to do this. I don't, when that baby I come out, that when that baby come out, I was standing right there when she popped out. That baby <laughs> was hardly made over. Okay, and it, look, we... <laughs> We often examine physical appearance in this courtroom <laughs> because we know that that's a natural way that people tend to identify or how they deal with paternity questions. They often compare physical features. What we also have come to know in this courtroom is that does not prove anything. Well, no. So, what I want to understand is... Did you ever test the other guy, the one that said, I want the DNA No, test. Your Honor. But if another guy says, I want a DNA test mm -hmm. because I think this could be my baby, mm -hmm. then that says to me, you might be lying about whether or not he could potentially be the father. Okay, Your Honor, he actually would do anything to be with my daughter. But see, what I'm concerned about is we've got text messages that indicate you were lying about the time frame. So do you believe this other guy thought you might have been lying about the time frame as it relates to him? He might have, but he and knows... And that's that why he test. asked for the DNA test. Yeah. What are you feeling in this moment, Miss Wheeler? I feel... I see your I feel hand. Like everybody's you jumping on me. <laughs> like I'm being jumped on, mm -hmm. basically. Everyone's against me. Do you also feel like you know you're responsible for a lot of what's happening here? Yes, and I take credit for that. Do you have a reason or an understanding as to why you do tell all of the lies you tell? You may be honest with you. He's married, and I just wanted a family. It's okay. You can take your time, because I knew something was on your heart. Because <laughs> you're out there just spinning. I've never seen her in all her time for dating, guys. I have never seen her take a guy with her everywhere she goes. But what, but what I think your daughter is saying, and this is, and, 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 and you are giving me, <laughs> you are giving me great insight, Miss Champion, into what's happening here. <laughs> you're not listening to her. Christina, I heard you. You say you just wanted a family. You love Mr. Hodges, but it's not just about wanting to be a family with him, it's that you wanted a family. You wanted to try to make the family you didn't have growing up, right? Now I get it. I know it's not easy to be here and you're caught in this lie and that lie and this lie and that lie. It's hard when it all comes out on the table. It's the breaking down so it can build you back up. I just want to know, do you truly believe Mr. Hodges is the biological father without a doubt? Or is it that you so desperately want him to be because this is the family in your mind you want it to put together? No, I believe it. You do? That's the only person I was with. Mr. Hodges and Miss Blevins, what kind of relationship have you built with Lillian thus far? She's one month old. We've been keeping her. We've been seeing her since we first found out about her. Christina lets us see her, and we've had her for over a week now. I'm um, spending time with her. And, and honor, Your Honor, I want to say, I don't want no hard feelings with Christina. I just want to know if this is my grandbaby. Mr. Hodges? Yes, Your Honor. Tell the court how you feel. You've developed a bond thus far with this beautiful baby. I would feel betrayed, hurt. I want the baby to be mine. I you do. do. Yes, Your Honor. You sincerely want this baby to I be do. yours. Even though you're married to someone else right now, you still really want this baby to be yours. Yes, Your Honor. Being there with her just get attached. 
I'm used to her being there. Well, I believe I've taken enough testimony and I am ready for the results. How about you? Thank you, Jerome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Hodges versus Willard, when it comes to one month old Lillian Willard, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Hodges, you are the father. We have the answer we needed. And it was actually the answer all of you wanted. You okay, honey? Yeah, I'm fine. I want to meet with you both in my chambers. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Court is adjourned.